felt the total lack of control that we all feel right now. The it's it, it's out of my hands. The the where's the authority? The hey, it's amateur hour at our darkest moment. It's the feeling of capitalism vanishing. Businesses capsizing under their own weight thanks to an administration that doesn't seem to know or maybe doesn't care. It's the feeling of a slow motion accident that never seems to end. And it won't stop. See, it won't stop until stocks reach absurd levels and too many people do this. It won't stop until we get some recognition from the president that the agenda has caused some horrible reaction. The House of Pain. Would it be so hard for Obama to come out and say, you know, here are my goals. I, I, I want to do this cap and trade thing. I want to make it so we're being prudent about health care. I want to balance that budget. I want to raise taxes for the wealthy. But I also recognize that the moment's so perilous that maybe we've got to put the whole agenda on hold until we're more on terra firma. He needs to postpone it, whether you like it or not. Because it's forcing everything down. Not just the banks sell, anymore. Sell, sell. Now, I'm not asking someone to come in and hold stocks up. I'm not asking for them to ah, make us feel it ain't so bad. Uh, do I impress you as a lovey blanket? Uh, let's all hands get together, sing kumbaya kind of guy. Just some kind of recognition from Obama or from his invisible secretary uh, of Treasury, Tim Geithner, that given the enormous destruction of wealth that's happening in this country, much of it now thanks to Obama's agenda, that maybe it's time to hold it back a little, maybe do some reconsidering. We have failed to cordon off the banks from the rest of the market because of Obama's actions. He's made people scared. Yes, he's made people afraid. Uh, Afraid. Afraid about their money. Afraid to spend. Afraid that their taxes are going to go too high. Afraid that there could be no bottom in the economy. Hey, look, I get it. Young president. Big landslide. Vigorous agenda. Congress that smells Republican blood. Might find changing the world simply irresistible. We all want to change the world. I know I like to change the world, but when you talk about wealth destruction, don't you know that you can count me out? Look, if the Dow goes below 6,000 or even 5,000, to say nothing of 4,000, I don't want to talk about it going any lower than that because I want to be taken seriously. Then it will create poverty and despair for more than just the rich. Remember that ownership society thing last eight years? It was about stocks. It's about homes. If we get to these levels, then regular people who don't even own stocks, who just own annuities or life insurance policies, may find them worth much less than they thought, as the companies that invested those monies for future payouts find themselves without the money to make the payments. The head of AIG said as much today when he talked about problems in paying annuities. I told you about that guy. I told you about that company. But you know what? That got me in trouble. I had a lot of battles to fight. Don't want to be slowed down by the trouble. I'm not saying that what's good for the stock market is always good for America. But right now, it sure is. Stability matters more than anything else here. Stability is measured by the stock market. That stability's vanished. We want to stabilize this market and therefore save uh, ordinary people's savings. Just save it. The president's got to put his agenda on the, uh, the whole button. At least until we got into a place where it no longer feels like the economy's falling apart. You can't trash the market along with housing without causing a tremendous surge in poverty. Maybe social unrest. And Obama's doing both with his budget of his. The stock market isn't everything, but it, it, it does matter. And I'm seeing no signs from the administration that they even acknowledge that it does. The last time the Dow Jones average hit 4,000 in 1994, 4,000, okay, we still got, hey, we still got a couple of points there, 2,800 points. But last time it hit 4,000 1994, there was a great new world ahead of us with the peace dividend from the fall of the Soviet Union, the remarkable, bloom, remarkable blooming of capitalism across the world. We had a total repudiation of communism and a multi-year move ahead of tech, for tech, where the PC passed the mainframe in power, where email replaced snail mail, where the Internet took the world by storm, where cell phones went from something that the rich had to something that you and I had. And perhaps the most important thing of all, the public discovered stocks as a place to put their retirement money and corporations handed off their pension obligations to the people. 
in the form of IRAs and 401k said, listen, you take care of it yourself. And that money almost entirely went to the stock market because long-term investing was where is that? Now, despite the bullishness of a guy like Warren Buffett about what's coming, the future ahead of 1994, I picked that because that could be where we're going, was a heck of a lot brighter than the future seems right now with what seems like a policy of government-mandated wealth destruction on top of the worst economic environment since the Great Depression. Here's the bottom line. Given the times we're in, we cannot afford the president's agenda. We can't afford a totally absent Treasury Secretary. We certainly, uh, well, we can't afford their refusal to acknowledge that a broken stock market is a huge problem. Why don't we go to Tay in Alaska to start? Tay! Greetings, Joe. How are ya? No, Tay, you know, I don't like these damn 300 days. They get to me. How about you? Well, you know something, darling? The sky is still blue in Homer. What can I say? Well, the <laughs> sky was real gray here today. And all the leaves were brown for that point. What's up? Oh, I, I heard. Listen, I want to ask you, and this is kind of a gut feeling check, and I want to run it by you to see what Hold on. Let me get to Tom's. Where's the Mylanta? It's a gut feeling check. Throw me the Mylanta. Just a sec. Just a sec here, Tay. I got to be prepared. Toss it. Well, <laughs> hand me the thumbs, dear. Um, well, listen, what I want to want to suggest is that stocks like Bristol Myers, um, Verizon, AT&T, General Mills have not hit their 52-week lows since October 10th. And what I'm thinking is, is that the market will not hit a low until those stocks hit another 52-week low. What do you think? Tay, you got horse sense. I think that all those stocks could hit those levels, but by the way, in every single case, I would be a buyer of those. Why? Because then you get, you get gigantic yields and you get companies that I think are absolutely, without a doubt, what I call them Obama resistant. Notice I didn't say Obama proof because that's like saying that a lead lining is going to stop the, the uh, nuclear fallout. And we both know that that lead lining does not have everything good. Uh, strontium 90 is a pretty powerful element. But I like your thinking and we'll wait till it gets there and then we'll deal with it. Steven in Texas. Steven. Kramer. Hey, Chief. Booyah from Fort Worth, Cowtown, Texas. Well, hold on. Let's go drilling down there in some of those schoolyards. Oops, no, we're not allowed to drill anymore because that's considered bad form. What's up? We're big fans of yours down here. Well, and thank your you. Program. Thank you, and I'm a big fan of America, of which you are most definitely a part of. But, Kramer, yeah. why are you placing so much blame on the present economy on Obama. Well, you, see, I can do something you, about him. You see, you I can't right. affect I can't affect that Ukraine. I don't you know what's it. going on in that that Bel or Bell Russia, whatever they call that uh, Kyrgyzstan. What is that? Uh, I don't know that. But then again, I'm not running for president. I guess what I'm saying is, is that we were doing better before that that uh, that budget. That budget made it so that a lot of areas that were I, I consider to be safe are no longer safe. Do I favor a lot of his policies? At the right time, yes, and you will hear later in the show, I actually do think a lot of them are right. It's just not the right moment, because right now we got that thing going. I don't want that thing like they had over there in Germany where they're torching the BMWs and torching the Mercedes Benz. That's not what I want to see. So I feel like maybe we ought to take a break from the agenda and give this market a chance to stabilize, because otherwise what's going to happen is I have to come out here every night and talk about gold and silver and cash. Because cash not only is king, but I think I may elevate it to, well, let's say, I got, well, there's not that many other pieces on the board that really have a lot of action, but that queen's pretty good. Stay with Kramer.